guys and welcome to Free From Friday. I'm here in the kitchen, I'm Karen Griffiths and I have my trusty sidekick Simon with me. Hello. Hello there. And so today Apologies I am... Apologies for the... Um, oh, slight delay. We had a, a, a slight... Was it a technical hitch, was it yeah, Simon? a technical hitch. A technical hitch. You so. wanted to tell me. <laughs> 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 yeah, you, I don't want to mime to you. Today, as you know, on Monday I made the uh, the macrons with uh, gorgeous whipping it up and made them into Valentine's hearts. Well, today I'm going to do macrons again, but I'm going to do nut free. For all those people who don't like nuts or can't have nuts, I'm going to do uh, two lots of macrons. I'm going to make some with semolina and I'm going to make some with the fine cornmeal, which is the ready to cook polenta. And we're we'll going to try those, we're going to colour them, we're going to shape, do the heart shaped again because we're still going to base on the Valentine's theme and we're going to see how they go out and I'm going to make Swiss meringue buttercream to go in the centre for them and they will decorate them with a the chocolate like we did on Monday. So have we got her, a Simon hello there, Simon? Hello. I mean, Simon, our first, our first oh, special hello. Gillian Smith. Well done, Gillian Smith, you've got Simon's first <laughs> special hello. So put this out of here. So who was watching the live last night with Carol when she was doing the isomal and she made these amazing sails out of isomal and the flowers and we've got the just bring it over here. I don't want to break those, I'm only gonna bring the whole thing over. We've got the uh, the gorgeous engagement ring, the love heart, we've got the wedding cake. All out of ice malt. Carol had a, a right good old play last night, didn't she? And we were saying, um, so Carol, Carol broke that, um, when she broke that sail, and she said we'll melt it down. She melted the sail down. She melted that little um, blue one that had broke. You know, when she said it, it had broke, she had a, like a, a, a blue abstract figure, whatever you call it. Uh, she melted that down, and... We added some extra red to the saucepan while it was all melting down and then put it into our little chocolate mould and look, you've got, we added extra red, you've got lovely red, shiny, isomalt little uh, cubes to melt down next time. So you can, you don't have to melt a couple down, you can just do them to your projects, you don't have to melt loads and loads down. So don't waste any leftover isomalt, just whip it in the microwave, get it all nice and... Um, nice and liquidy again and then just pour it straight into the mould and like I say if you can put all your colours together and then get a really dominant colour if you want to if you wanted to get a, like a deep blue or a deep red and make that into a lovely red colour and save it or if you've got enough in the jars that you want to save them in the colours that you've made it's great these little moulds are absolutely great for and I'm, all I'm going to do with these is later I'm just going to pop them out and I'm going to put them in a tub with a couple of with a, that pack of that silica gel that uh, We'll preserve them in the plastic tub. You can buy that silica gel on Amazon, I think Carol was saying. You get like a hundred bags for about for, for about three ninety nine or something like that. So they're great to put in with the isomalt to preserve it. So isn't that great that there's no waste on isomalt? All the little bits that were on the, uh, the silicone mats, we just peeled it off, popped it in the pan, so there was absolutely no waste at all last night. So I just thought we'd show you those, how easy it is to, to just make yourself some little ice and coloured balls and you're ready to go on your next project. Um, we don't sell those, do we? We don't sell those. We get those, uh, we uh, you can get them on Amazon. Carol put a link on when we was doing, in the Olive the Choc, when we was doing chocolates and that, so we had links. So you can just go on Amazon and just put in silicone moulds and you'll find the little ones like that. And they're absolutely the ideal size for doing your little ice and pellets. Have we got any questions about uh, whipping it up or anything on macarons? And I'll get, I'm going to start off now. First thing we're going to do, we're going to make the meringue mix. I'm going to do the semolina ones first. So I'm going to do, it's the coarse semolina, and I've sifted this three times to make sure that I get any hard bits out or anything, like if there's any shells there. So I've done all that and I've done that three times now so I've got that in my bowl there I'm going to whip up 125 grams and I'm using raspberry ripple flavoured whipping it up 
So 125 grams of whipping it up. The bowl is completely... Raspberry ripple. Raspberry yeah. ripple. Mm. Um, you've got, as, as always, please remember that your bowl and your beater are completely grease-free. Otherwise, your meringue mix won't get to the stiff peaks that you need. I need 135 ml of tepid water. Now, on the website, the macron mix is uh, for a 250 gram mix, but as I'm wanting to make one of each, I'm doing half portions like I did on Monday. So I'm doing a 125 gram mix and it's 135 mils of water. No, it's not, sorry, it's 50. No, it's 50 mils of water. I was thinking, so it's 50 mils of water. So 125 gram is 50 mils of water. I would never have got stiff peaks then, Simon. I wasn't even listening, yeah. I'm yeah. sorry. So it's 50 mils of water to 125 gram of whipping it up. I'm going to put that in there. Start it on a bit of a slow speed, just for it to get together. And then we'll turn it up and we'll whip it for around, so it gets a nice stiff peak. It should be around about four minutes. So because these are the semolina ones, because I'm doing the two different ones today, I'm going to colour them in two different colours so we can tell the difference and you can see what they both look like. So I think I'll do these semolina ones, we'll do them in a nice jade. I'll do, two, I'll do a very light jade and a darker jade and I'll marble it together. So I'm just banging the bowl down a little bit. Water, Sorry? Tepid water. tepid water, yes. I'm just going to knock down the bits of uh, the whipping it up powder that are on the side of the bowls. Just going to knock that down into the liquid. Then we're going to turn that up now. So into my mixing bowl, I'm putting 90 grams of semolina and 25 grams, and I've got raspberry ripple, um, natural flavoured icing sugar. So that's going into the bowl, and I'm gonna give that a good mix round together. Just so they're both all incorporated into each other. So I am going to use the Jade Colour Splash um, Concentrated Food Colour Gel. And as I said, I'm going to do that into two. I'm going to do a light jade and a darker jade. Uh, I will colour that once I've made the macron mix. I will divide it into two bowls and then I'll colour it. I've got the baking trays ready. I've got my heart template ready. And I've also got my greaseproof paper that was measured to fit over the heart template. That's all right. So always have everything ready before you start, then you're not having to um, leave your macron mix. So you don't want to leave it. You want to, as soon as it's made, you want to get it piped onto there and get it into the oven. The ovens are preheating now on 140 degrees C, which I think is 275 degrees Fahrenheit, gas mark 2. I will just check that. That was going from memory, that sign. Yes, that's correct. Don't use that mixer again, Karen. Not this one. I'm a shaking. It's shaking a lot, that. Well, I'll tell you what then. What about if I get a mat and put a mat underneath it? Look Right, just bear with me a second. I'm just going to turn that off a minute. Um, I'm just Don't worry about it. it, just get... I know, but if we stop it shaking too much for you. We'll just put it under a grip hole mat. It's because it's quite a long counter, isn't it? So there we go. Put a grip hole mat there. How's that? Is that any better? Really? I just 
turn it on now, we'll get that mixed in quick. So what colours should we do next week then, Simon? Should we, should we go to the lovely uh, bronze colour? Or should we have the pink one? Is that on the bronze this, co this, is, this is copper. Oh, is it past this rose gold? No, it's, it's, like a, it's like a copper one, this one, isn't it? So that's starting to thicken up really nicely now. I will show you when it gets to the stiff peak so that you can see it. You want to be able to have it on the, the, the width where the peak sticks out and it doesn't droop down. It holds its own shape while it's on its side. Have you got any questions, Simon? Anybody really want to ask me anything while I'm just waiting for this to mix up? Oh, yeah. You don't see a thing that one. I think you've got a bit oh, of isomalt stuck to it. Sorry, a bit of isomalt stuck up. It's what it is. It's the isomalt's come off the um, the tray there when I picked it up. Oh, thank you. I didn't show, you show your hands again. I didn't even. I didn't even feel that. <laughs> yeah, you see, it's the isomalt. I'll just show you this on the overhead. What's on the overhead of it, probably Simon? Can it look like you've your finger? Yeah, can you go to the overhead? Just one right, there you go. So it's all these little bits, they pick off really easy. And it must have picked off and just stuck to the finger I didn't even realise. <laughs> That's starting to uh, stick up really good now. I'm just going to look at it, see how we're doing. I've got a little droop on that, only slight, so I'm just going to give that just about 30 seconds to a minute more. I can, I can never get this back in. Quick whisk up there, go on to high speed, and that is practically ready, so that'll be a little quick more. So you can see, if we go to the uh, front camera now, that's going nowhere. That peak is stuck straight out and it's not drooping down, it's going nowhere. So that is our meringue mix ready. So don't really forget that was 125 grams of mix with 50 mils of tepid water. Now I'm going to put half of this into the semolina and icing sugar, mix that in and then put the other half in. The semolina is a little bit more coarser than what you really fine ground almonds are, but if you can't have the almonds, this is a really good alternative to have. And when sandwiched together with the Swiss meringue buttercream, it, it, they're, they're just great macrons. As you can see, I'm just trying to fold the mixture over rather than stirring it. So I've got all that mixed in there and let's put the rest of our meringue mix in now. There we go, put that over there. And then we'll mix, fold this one in again now until it's all in and then I'll start going up the side of the bowl to release some of the air out and you go up the bowl it can be between five and ten times you want to go up the bowl uh, until the mixture starts to slide in on itself again so I just paddle it up the side then scrape it down to the center and then repeat so it just depends on how warm it is it depends on the weather and it depends on how thick your mixture is I mean, this could take a couple more paddlings because the semolina is a little bit thicker than what the ground almonds are. 
Could you use fine wrap? I did. Oh, right. I have, and I, I've, um, I've, 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 I've sifted it and I've ground it down as well. But that's starting to come down now, so I'm just going to do that a couple more times so it's coming down. I'm getting it all off the bottom as well to make sure I've got everything off the bottom. So how did you do your heart templates? Did you just, where did you get them from or did you make them yourself? Uh, Mr Google. But we have got them, um, and Terry is going to be putting them on the community page. I don't know if she's done it yet. Um, she was, we're going to get the heart templates and put them on the community in units so that you can all uh, download them and print them off if you want to. But we just got them off, uh, off the Google, off the free templates, and put the hearts on there. Chose the ones that were a nice size. That's starting to slowly come down the bowl. I just want a couple more times because I don't I want to be able to put the colour in without over mixing. So what's the reason you paddle it? It takes some of the air out so that you're not going to get loads of air holes in. So today, people, we are making nut-free macarons using whipping it up. So you're making them at the moment with semolina, this which is, is found fine ground semolina, instead of almonds. Yep. Instead of ground almonds. It's actually, it was a coarse semolina that I bought in the packet. It doesn't look, it's pretty fine, but it says coarse. But I uh, sifted it and then I did it in uh, the little food processor, you know, to grind it down a little bit more. So obviously this is not gluten free, because it's semolina, which is made from wheat. It's just nut free today. It's nut free. But the polentas that you'll be making later yep. is gluten free. Right, that's slipping down, uh, that you, that's sliding down the bowl very gently. So I'm going to divide that into the two bowls. Good morning, Match. On your two. Good morning. So I'm going to do one a bit darker. And again, I'm just going to fold this in to get the colour. is asking can this be done egg and nut free um, obviously not with the whipping at all not with the whipping up the whipping up has the egg white in it and you see it's made with meringue I mean whether you can make the meringues with you using um, the, the normal icing sugar and some egg replacer egg replacer yeah I'm trying to think of the word of the egg replacer thanks Simon <laughs> it, just, it was on the tip of my tongue um, so you could try it we haven't tried it have we no well, you could try it and let us know how you do I think it's three grams of egg replacer to two tablespoons of water uh, equals an egg white, if I remember, off the side of the packet. So there we go, I've got a well, nice... You'd, you'd want to use the same amount of water as, as you, you're putting in this recipe. So you'd have to do the egg white accordingly. Yeah. And then I'm just going to do a tiny... So in theory it should work the same, shouldn't it? Yes. Yes, possibly, possibly chickpea water might work in place of normal water. Yeah, 
any sugar? I don't know. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm not Another sure. Another one, but we, we yeah. haven't tried, so we can't say. So I'm going to use a number 12 on this one. I'm going to use a number 12, Wilton number 12 nozzle, or you could have gem number 12. I'm going to use this on this one because I'm going to use a number 10 on the ones with the uh, polenta in it. I just want to see with the, the difference with both nozzles. Oh, I've cut the bag. You're not supposed to cut the bag until you've got everything in. It is just one of them habits. On the next ones, I won't cut the bag. And then I'm just going to do a spoonful of dark, a spoonful of light. So I'm going to keep to as much as I can just inside the heart because they do spread. You don't want to go any bigger than the heart. Put that down a minute while I just get Simon just to turn the uh, sound off at a moment, just while I give these a bang. Are you ready? Oh, no. no Banging no. them ten times. Just to uh, just put down any little tails that are there. I'm just putting the little tails down, and I can saw I had one little hair, air hole there, so I'm just going to fill the air hole in. Then take my sheet away and just do the next one because this one will this mix. This mix manages to get you 24 hearts, which is 12 full macrons. Squeeze it down, here we go. And these are going to go in the oven for between 9 and 11 minutes. I know that sounds a bit funny, but it depends on how your oven works. You want them to be nice and firm on the top, top and not to wibble 
when you uh, touch them in the oven. So you, you want them to have feet on them, but not be uh, look, not look like they're sliding. The tops are sliding. I've got a little bit more there, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull, pull that down like that, and I can get. So I've got a few more out. So rather than wasting, you just pull your. Just make sure your hearts are staying on your tray and then just pull it down. I don't want to waste any so whoops a daisy she says as she throws it everywhere. Here we go. Okay, so I'm going to, again, I'm going to bang these on the counter. There we go, take that away and just see if I've got any little air holes there. I've got one there, just fill that in. What's wrong? <laughs> Nikki King hasn't heard the word wibble since Blackadder. <laughs> I think I got I got it off Claire Claire Corbett when she was doing her live when she was doing her course and she says with the wibble test and I think it's always it's just stuck with me right I'm going to pop these in the oven now check them at 10 minutes. Quick clean down. So that recipe, that recipe for the uh, semolina ones was 125 grams of semolina which I'd, uh, sift, which I'd sift three times and I've blitzed it in a grinder and it was um, so that's a 90 sorry 90 grams of that 125 grams of whipping it up which you mix with 50 mils of water and you add 25 grams of natural flavored icing sugar to your semolina in the bowl and then you do half as I showed you mix it all in add the other half then divide it into two bowls and color or you can leave it the plain color if you wish to and Sam I'm going to make the next ones but I've not got a bowl I forgot my bowl. <laughs> Realise you can't. Thank you. Forgetting that you can't use the same bowl to make the next meringues because you need to do it from scratch. So every bowl has to be washed thoroughly and you, 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 you whisk washed thoroughly. So that was the semolina ones that are finished with now. It's now time to do the cornmeal ones. So this is ready to, this is fine cornmeal. Again, I did sift this, but it did go straight through the sieve. So this is fine cornmeal and it's ready to cook polenta. So this is what we're gonna use for these ones. So into the bowl, 125 grams of whipping it up. Which I'm going to mix with 50 mils of tepid water. I 
Chris has just found it. <laughs> Hello, Mum. <laughs> So I'm just going to knock that again. I've got another clean beater. I'm not using any of the same utensils that I used on the last mix. Everything is completely clean. So that's on now. That's at a nice speed. Just bear with me. And that's what you've got to be really careful of on these kitchen aids. That when it jiggles, and it must have been jiggling, hasn't it, Sam? Because it's been rocking, it's hasn't been it? It's been jiggling a lot. Yeah. Though. So there we go, it's tightened on really well. And I have my 90 grams of polenta here, which is going into my bowl. And I've got my 25 grams of natural flavoured icing sugar going into my bowl. Again, just to give that a mix round so it's all together. Keep your eye on that. I've got my two bowls here ready for doing my colours. I'm going to do them two-tone pink. into the baking tray. Use it upside down, it's sort of, the heat is more um, even on your macarons rather than trying to go into the deep tin. This has chocolate on my fingers because I've been melting the chocolate down so you don't have to wait for ages later. I've melted the chocolate down there just to give it sort of 15 minutes in the microwave. website it's under the whipping it up section and it's under it says whipping it up macarons and you can find the full recipe there now that's starting to get nice and stiff peaks again now don't forget to like and share i'm hoping the price rolls will be done later So like and share, like and share for a chance to win a brownie bundle. So it doesn't take long, it's only about four or five minutes that we pin it up. So as you know, it was no live on Monday, on Monday day, I'm not live Monday day, because we have Julie Rogerson in, 
doing the uh, fairy tree stump cake. So how good is that going to be? You've still got time to book onto that class for Monday. And then Jim is going to do a live Monday night as well. Just test this now. There we go. That's going nowhere. I've even got a little little peak on it. It's like, up like a beak. That's going nowhere. So we know that meringue is perfect. But if you want this turn on Monday, and then Julie's doing a, a live on Monday night as well, and then, as you know, Tuesday it was Carol's Buster Cream Flowers, but I'm going to come on instead, and I'm going to do the chocolate moulds, all the brand new chocolate moulds we've got. Well, not, not I'm going to use a selection of them. Uh, and then Wednesday we haven't got a live, and then Thursday it's uh, Carol with the grandchildren again, and then we have Laura in the evening, and then Friday I haven't got a live, we've got Doe Griffin in with that gorgeous Valentine cake toppers, so we've got a really busy week next week, again you've got time to, uh, you've got time to register for all these classes, and also to let you know that all the classes that have been on previously are now half price, there's a sale on, on the website until midnight on Sunday. So you can get all the previous classes that are there. Uh, you can see a lot of them are all half price. So get on doing them. Again, just mixing this in like I did with on with the semolina. As you can tell, this polenta is a lot finer. It's like powder. So these are going to be lovely, silky and smooth. just mixing it in just by folding it in not mixing it not stirring it we're just folding it in all the time right at an opportune moment just bear with me a second Sometimes when you do a deep colour as well, they just take a little bit longer to cook. So do be aware that if you're doing like really deep pinks and deep reds, they do take longer to cook. And they also will take longer to dry as well. Making sure that's all off the bottom as well. There we go. And then up the sides. This is starting to come down on itself already. I've only gone around the bowl four times. So they've took 11 minutes to do. So I'll quickly get on with this. I didn't want to leave it, but that is starting to come down on itself. Now I'm going to divide it into the bowl so I can mix the colour so we're not over mixing it.
So again we'll do a deeper pink. Mary is asking, are the cellophane and tissue bundles available yet? They're going on the website later today, I think. I have to check that with Carol, but I'm sure she said she was putting some on the website. I think we were just waiting to bag them up. I mean, we're just waiting for the uh, the packaging to arrive, so I'm not too sure. I will check with Carol later for you. So that's a nice deeper pink there. I'm just going to do a very light pink there. And why aren't you giggling and laughing? Because <laughs> I'm, I'm <laughs> concentrating. <laughs> you wait till I'm making the Swiss brown butter cream and then I've got chocolate ever. You know me and chocolate. And we get the chocolate going. Chocolate. <laughs> oh, I'm going to... You didn't see on Monday, did you, Simon? You don't see how posh these turn out, do you? Oh, you just wait and see. We all know, don't we, ladies? So that is a really light... It's more like a peachy colour. Yeah, oh. we're not making enough noise today, are we? Yeah. <laughs> and then I would say, I'm being, I'm being very serious, aren't I? It's because I'm, I think what it is, I'm just I'm, uh, concentrating. Let's see what you're concentrating on. <laughs> so there we go. So I've just got my two colours now. So I'm going to get my other piping bag. And you have done them different colours to the other ones, haven't you? Yes. I want, yeah, I wanted to do them different colours, just so that you can, when, they, when we put them side by side later, we know which ones is which. So as I did before, I'm going to actually use, I'm going to use a number 10 nozzle this time. And no, I'm not going to cut the bag. Cut the bag once you've put the mix into your bag. It was just second nature before just to cut the, the, the tip straight away. So as I did before, I'm just gonna I'm gonna go a spoonful of light and then a spoonful of dark. into here Now I am ready to cut my bag. So I'm just going to push the nozzle up there a little bit. There we go. Then push it out and then I've got my bag ready. Right, let's see how these turn out. I'm hoping the pink will come through in a moment. ignored my rule there and went slightly out of the heart don't go out of the heart if you can help it because they do spread and they do come up nice and big you don't want them to spread and stick together I'm just going to do another row on there. I 
and then we'll turn the turn the sound off while I get them you ready? Are we ready, Simon? Yeah. So that's the first one. Come in at the very now. Hello there. Well, just really scared. We're doing big bangy noises. Yeah. <laughs> Hello there, Cat. So just squeeze it down your bag. As I said, you need nice and steady hands. If you want to, if you've got a bit of a dribble on your nozzle, just put it in the middle of the heart, so then you can go up to do the outline. Try and stay on the outline or just inside. I know a couple of those that I started off that I said I broke my own rule and went a little bit too big. We had a chat about that this week, Karen. <laughs> <laughs> what, breaking rules? <laughs> <laughs> about you going outside the boundaries. <laughs> <laughs> My hand slipped. <laughs> I think it's easy to do, though, isn't it? You look at yeah. it and you want to go on the outside, yeah. don't you? you yeah. But you really need to stay on the inside. You, you do need to go do, just put it on the edge and you're just sort of going round the inside of the line rather than the outside. Yeah. Karen did them earlier, that's what we were chatting about, because yeah. um, then they all started merging into each other. But I've done the same mistake. I did it on a template that we had. And I'm just going to... got a little bit left now, so I know I'll get another row out like we did before. So this one mix actually makes you um, 24 and 6, 30, which makes you 15. It makes you 15 uh, full... 15 full um, macrons, which is great. <laughs> Karen, what are you doing? You see that? I get a flummoxed door. A boss comes in, that's it. There we go. I've got to blame somebody. If, it hadn't been, if you'd not been there, I'd blame Simon, don't worry. <laughs> I'm just going to get one more out of this now. Then one last lot of banging. Are we ready, Simon? Right, and so I'm going to pop these in the oven and I will show you the, uh, the ones with the semolina because they're out of the oven. People seem to enjoy your show last night, Carol. Did they? Yeah. Yeah. What did they enjoy the most? Well, then said that. I know, but they can tell them nothing. Okay. What did you like the most, ladies? <laughs> tell them now. Egg. The mucking about. The mucking about. I did watch some of it last night. I watched an hour of it last night, the last hour. And I did think I was as mad as a box of frogs. I thought that from the first hour. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> what was the happy birthday song about? Because <laughs> the only song I knew. <laughs> I know because you, you, you just kept saying. Oh, I forgot that. Yeah, yeah. Magic dragon. you made me laugh because it <laughs> was in a private group that time. You made me laugh because every time you just wanted to test something, you went, "Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you." I'm <laughs> And that's your testing song when you want to test your ice malt set. The big bowl. They love the big bowl. The big bowl. Is that what you like the best one? I think it's probably because it was going to be so stressful and it kept going wrong. Oh, that, yeah. They're great though, aren't they? I mean, when you look at them, aren't they superb? I had not picked them up today. I've shown them the um, the, the little pearly stick we've saved. I've not picked because it's not all attached. Simon doesn't know how I picked that up, wunged it, flung it over there, and I did it completely out. I have the back of it, yeah. so I completely forgot that the decorations were on. I think they were by the grace of God. Exactly, that was exactly <laughs> it. Did you explain that we melted everything? Yes, I did. And I've also said, no matter what colours they've got, if they want to put it all into a pot, then they, buy, they then get the strongest colour they've got to get to that colour. Yeah. And we didn't waste any ice at all, did we, Carol? There was nothing wasted. Everything was melted down. 
We are going to uh, melt all these down because yeah. I really don't want to. <laughs> unless, unless anybody's local, if anybody's local, they want to come in a big one. I know you said post them, but they'll never survive. No, oh post. my goodness. Yeah, well, they'll, 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 you pack them and they'll just break because yeah. they're so thin on the edges. Yeah. They will just... But if anybody's local and they want one for You're their You're not giving that one away. Eh? That's staying. That's the only one I'm going to keep. That's not staying. Melt that one no, down. that's not melting down. Yeah. And actually, I, I don't. I actually don't want that melting down unless you do Which another one. one the, the big fruit bowl. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm not that impressed with that. I'm impressed with the colours though. Yeah, the colour is absolutely lovely. Yeah. But that, that I, I love that one. It's... I love them because I love the way the the gold all went up yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. So they they are easy to clean. Remember, we said about the jugs and that. It, it's, it takes a little while. It takes a little while because it's the glitter that sticks to the bottom as well. But all I did was put the jug back in the microwave and got it a bit more liquidy into hot soapy water, soaked it for 10 to 15 minutes, and you know what? A nice uh, dishcloth or a scourer brings it off. Well, we finished the live about, what did we finish the live? 10 past 10 last night, was it? Four past 10. But we were all out of here for 11 o'clock, cleaned up. The kitchen was done. We didn't finish at 10 past 10. I thought we finished it. I think it was that near, near, near a half ten we finished. Did we finish at near half ten? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we were out of here for 11 o'clock, weren't we? No. no. What time did we leave? Half eleven. Was it half eleven? Because you had to make photographs. <laughs> right, okay. well, 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 do you know what? It was a great, it was a great day, live. It was a brilliant live and I am in love with Isomol. I've not. I've only had a little go with, with Carol, but I'm looking forward to when I'm on my own, completely quite like Carol said, be on your own, have no pets around, you don't have the kids around you, you need peace and quiet for you to concentrate because it's extremely hot yeah. and it is dangerous if you don't do it right. But watch the videos Carol does from the beginning because you get step by step from the beginning. And don't forget, I'm only playing, and you know, I'm sure I'm going to have some old specialists going, what on earth she talking about? <laughs> but you know, I'm just playing, but my main thing is the danger, do you know what I mean? I don't want yeah. any of you burning yourself no. or mucking about or... And I don't want any kiddies burning, no. I'll be really honest. These are the semolina ones. So these have come out now. And they're coming off the paper. I wanted these to come out first because I didn't have a lot of the... I didn't have a lot left to decorate in a moment. So I wanted these to come out because these are going to be nice and cool enough to decorate in a moment. So they're peeling off. Show bit, the feet on them as well. Bit time I've made the Swiss Meringue buttercream. See, see, they're a bit stuck. Uh, look at the feet on them. Simon? Where are you gone, Simon? I've got two together. Look at that, measured up together, Karen. Very nice. It shows I stayed within my lines. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So they had 11 minutes. Maybe, I mean, it only because when I, when I said what I said, the, the wibble test, when you do that, the whole of the bottom moved as well, so I needed to give it another minute. As I said, with stronger colours, they can take a minute or two longer to uh, to bake, and they also take a little bit longer to uh, to cool down. These here, I've, they were because I actually dropped the tray onto the counter, so it split straight away. Yeah, it's quite important that you do that wibble test, and it's important you leave them to dry on your baking sheet as well, while they continue to cook. So we are going to fill, as Simon said, you did butter cream on Monday, are you doing Swiss meringue cream today? Yes, okay. I think Simon's got, a, I think he's fancying trying a couple of the, uh, the, oh, yeah, the polenta ones, aren't you? He can have these, can't he? He's looking forward to the polenta ones because they look, because it's, a, is it wheat free, Simon? Yeah? Yeah, polenta's corn. Yeah. yeah so well, it's corn, just, just because corn meal. So Simon doesn't like this this copper mixer. No, don't use it again. We're not allowed to use the copper mixer again, Carol. Why? It makes the counter shake. Oh, does it? <laughs> he doesn't like shaky screens, do no. you, Simon? Well, it, nobody likes to see the picture shaking, <laughs> do they? Each, each of the uh, mixers behave differently, though. Don't they're they all just? The same. Yeah. They're all exactly the same, just different colours. And depending on what colour you have, depends how much you paid for it. So this copper one, it was a £975 one. I think it's come down in price it's now, gorgeous. though. gorgeous. I love that but, And I've got a steel one, which was around the same colour as well. But I had a silver one, which was a bit cheaper, which I give to my son, because it looks like grey goes with a kitchen. <laughs> um, the cheapest one I bought is one that I bought off eBay, which was the blue one. Well, we're going to use either the blue one or the steel one next yeah. week, just for a change. And we're going to go through, every week I'm just going to go through a different colour, yeah, so you're always going to see just different colours here. We had a pink one that was for donating towards breast cancer. And then we've got that 
cut that we've got that brown bronze one isn't it, it? yeah it's, it's like a bronzy color yeah and then the others i've given away mm. but these ones are stopping because if we, if we carry on just doing a different one, we're not wearing one out. It just means they're all getting the same kind of use. And yeah. it might stop shaking, bless him. Yeah. Get your little thing that needs put broken in as well. With your hammer. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I've already had this try and fly off. Okay, yeah. That's the other thing. So yeah. there's little bits about it, about the KitchenAid that does... Yes, I'm going to there we go. A little bar, there's a little bar that attaches the head. Yeah. yeah. It's a it's a rubber mallet, so you don't you don't actually whap it. Just tap it very very nice, and it just brings that lovely silver bit back in. Because my hands are I've got old hands now. My thumbs hurt. I can't yeah. press it in. It's the bar. It's the bar that attaches yeah. the head to the base. And if that comes out, which it nearly did with me when I first started working here, yeah. didn't I, Carol? And the uh, the head practically attached. I, 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 I panicked. Swiss Meringue Buttercream, I have, as you can see from inside this bowl, I have whipped the living daylights out of this 250 gram block of butter. So it is lovely, light and creamy. So into that, I'm going to, I'm just going to give it another quick whip now while we're here, just to, to get to liven it up. really gorgeous and creamy now and into this I'm going to put 250 grams and I'm using velvet vanilla because I've used the raspberry ripple on the outside I'm just going to do a velvet vanilla filling and I've measured it out so I've got 250 grams of whipping it up velvet vanilla I'm going to chop that in And they need 135 mils of tepid water because I'm only doing half a batch. The recipe for the full bag is on the back of each bag of whipping it up and that's the recipe for the full bag. So I'm only using half a bag. So I've chopped that in. Back on switch. So let's just measure out 135 mils of tepid water. Yeah, that is still tepid. And I'm going to pour this in. I'm going to keep mix, start mixing this now, and I'm going to pour this in very slowly. some more and we'll go and get that in two minutes there we go just going to Leave that mixing now the water's in it. Right, Karen tried to do this too fast. You mustn't. It'll come back 
but you've got to pour it in slow. You've got to pour it in slow, and you've got to watch it go in. You've got to turn up the mixer, and you don't add any more water. You just keep it incorporating. I've done it. It gets a bit slip sloppy, and it will come. It will come, but you can't just keep pouring it in. You've got to do little stops. And turn the mixer up full. She's trying to be in the oven. Do this. Speed things up. So she's poured it in slow. Yeah. When she pours it in slow, she's got to turn the mixer on slow, then turn it up, then turn it up faster again, then turn it back down. Just keep adding the water. Ah. Just play with the mixer so it's all incorporated. You don't want to put the don't want to put the water in when it's on fast because it's just going to spin out up here. So you want to be down here, add the water in. Going. It's, I mean, it is going to come back. What I'm trying to tell you is if you see it yeah. and it's curdling, don't panic. It is going to come. It will come. She makes it all the time. <laughs> she makes all mine, so she knows how to make it. But she's on a live, and you know what it is. We're trying to multitask. They are. Do that. Go and get that out of the oven. Put that there. Think about what I've got to do next. So we're fine. So what I'm saying to you is don't throw it in. By any, do not throw it in. It's got to trickle in. You've got to mix it in slow. Turn up the speed. Make sure it's incorporated. Yeah? That's come back lovely. Yeah, it's lovely. Yeah. yeah so don't, it's like what you said. Don't think you've wasted it, isn't it? Don't bin it. Yeah, yeah. Don't bin it, say, yeah. yeah. Don't bin it, carry on with it and it'll come back. Yeah. Oh, sorry about that. Yeah, but I, I know I tried to, I could hear the beeper going. I didn't want my meringue sister, the, the macros to stay any longer. And that's where people make mistakes. That's yes. where you make mistakes in your kitchen. I think that's what I'm trying to say. You'll make mistakes because you're trying to do something in the kitchen. You're trying to do that and you just it's just lack of concentration. So when people say, I followed it to the letter, well, you have, but you haven't. Yeah. And that's... Oh, Karen's done. And what will happen is you'll see that curdle and you'll panic that it's curdling. Don't. Just turn the mixture up slowly and just keep getting it incorporated in. As you can see from that in there, beautiful Swiss meringue buttercream. Lovely, light and fluffy. Now I'm going to leave that a nice white colour because we've got the, uh, the jade of the macarons and we've got the pinks that have just come out now. Now these were some that I made earlier and this was with the polenta so I have some lovely ones here which I'm going to fill my piping bag and I'm actually going to use a 172 nozzle rather than go keep going to the old favourite of the uh, the 1M I'm actually going to use a 172 these are in stock Because I thought they just decorate these ones down that I've made with the polenta before. I can decorate, I can decorate these, and then the uh, jade ones with the semolina will have cooled down enough for me to decorate those for you. And they are, they're in a gorgeous jade colour. You're right, Simon. Are you yes, back? can I just want to have one of my Simon moments? You yeah, can have a Simon moment. It's not polenta. It's cornmeal. You can make polenta with it. It's only because it, it's only because it says there. Yeah, so it says cornmeal like fine, yeah. ready to, to cook, cook polenta. Oh, I thought I thought it was ready to cook polenta, not. So you're making polenta with cornmeal, <laughs> so it's cornmeal. Yeah, but you're not making polenta. No, but you're not making polenta. No. <laughs> it's like calling oat, uh, oats porridge. Yes. Oh, right. Well, there he is, see. <laughs> but it's a very good explanation. Yes, that, isn't it? it's a very good explanation. Yeah. I do we? need a Simon in my life. I really do. Yeah. Yeah. What's right? So you're not putting plants in it because that's usually made with stock or something. So this, it's actually, it is, and as I can show it's quite funny if you make it with, yeah. with, with stock. I'll show you that. It's actually fine cornmeal. Turn it around. And you uh, and on the overhead, yeah. and you can get it. And I found it on the uh, where the Indian section is in the supermarket. So that's where I found it there, and it's lovely. And it really is fine, I only had to sift that. I sifted it once, it went through, so I thought, oh, go on, I'll sift it again, and it just fell straight through the sieve again. It's that fine, it's great. So here we go. Right, I'm going, I'm off. Right, thanks ladies, and um, there's your jewels. I just, the reason I wanted to tell you is, I didn't realise that John put competition on on the 23rd. So it's only because I'm looking through it. Yeah. Um, I've saw all the, comp the competitions. So there's, there's um, 
It was about the video. Oh, great. So that price is on that one. Very nice, he's, like he's good at putting comps on, isn't he? I'm not telling us yet. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to put those here so you can see them. And it's just the 172. It's just a, a nice little, um, it's like about a nice little shell shape when it comes out. And then just press lightly down. Whoops, as she said, as she throws it around. Do like. What's using for that? This is a 172. I think with the jade ones, I'm going to go back to see what my uh, see what I feel like with my 1M because I need to get another nozzle anyway. No, because I don't think it'd be quite right tasting, would it? So here we go. I'm just going to turn that. I'm just going to get the nice sides up there. I just had one that broke a little bit there, but you know, hey ho, that's a, that's called the Simon one because he can eat that one. So I've got those. Now I have cooled my chocolate down in the microwave. I melted it down, but I just want to just give that a quick 15 minute whisk up again. A 15 second, 15 minutes, Simon. You weren't listening. What? It's 15 minutes. You weren't listening. It's 15 seconds altogether. And I'll show you the ones, the pink ones that have come out of the oven now. They're cool enough for me to handle. But not to decorate. To, just feels a little bit warm. I'm just going to put a couple of chocolates in there. Just, just felt a little bit warm. I don't like to run off and melt my meringues, my crumbs. There we go. And if it's pre-cooked, it's probably not going to work, is it? Got some moisture in it. Yes. And the moisture content would be all wrong. It would be, it would be wrong. It would be wrong. Yeah, for getting to. Otherwise, they'd probably go too sloppy if it's pre-cooked. Yeah. This, but this one is, you know, the ingredients are dried, aren't they? Yes. So, so they're absorbing some of the moisture that's in there. Yeah, so that's not going to work, I don't think. So you can get that, that cornmeal, it's, it's the, get the cornmeal from the supermarket. All yeah. the supermarkets sell it, it's absolutely great. Try not to get myself full of chocolate. I only had 15 seconds in the microwave, it just made it that little bit too warm, so I've just cooled it down, adding another couple of um, Calibo pellets to, pellets to it. Yep, that's cool enough. I'm going to get myself a... So, Cupcake Empress, um, we're not leaving it to 
We're not leaving it to set before putting in the oven now. They're going straight in the oven. Yes, we, we found we don't need to. We don't need to let them set. We don't need to let them settle and get a skin on. They're, they're fine just going straight in the oven with the whipping it up. That's the if, same with the old one version as well, isn't it? Yes. With, that's only with the whipping it up? Yes. Yeah, using the whipping it up, uh, whether you're doing almond version or you're doing your nut-free version, you don't need to let them rest anymore. You can just put them straight into the oven and they still get those lovely feet on. So I have got my edibles again, I've got the, uh, what I used on Monday, I've got the uh, purple cupcakes edibles and I've also got uh, happy sprinkles as well, so I can do a bit of both. So you want to cut on this, it's the smallest bit off your piping bag. Then I'm going to gust. And some are going to go straight across. Other ones just do. There. And I've got my tweezers. I don't understand that question. What's Trish? What do you stand fish on when whipping, please? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know whether that's some. Um, that's got to be that protective text. That it's got to be. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Because fish don't like to be out of water. <laughs> so I'm just doing a couple of little, like I did on Monday, just a couple of little sprinkles. Oh, dish! <laughs> <laughs> Somebody else worked it out for you. Some people, other people have worked it out for me. <laughs> <laughs> what do you stand dish on when whipping? Just nothing? Nothing, no. Just on the pink board or your hand? Well, uh, the uh, when I was whipping, when I was doing the, the whipping it up, um, the actual, do you mean the Swiss, uh, Swiss brown buttercream or do you mean the macron mix? They're both done on the mixer. Oops a daisy, here we go. And you have to work fast because your chocolate starts to set pretty quick. I don't whip my fish. You don't? No. It's a bit cruel really, isn't it? Well, <laughs> Unless it was a salmon mousse, I suppose. Oh, you are funny. <laughs> <laughs> and he's back. <laughs> so I'm going to... Uh, there we go, it's just got to be really quick because that, that chocolate has started to set really well. The other ones come out of the oven, yeah? Yeah, yeah. they're all out of the oven, yeah. That, that's when I got a kerfuffle doing the Swiss meringue because I was trying to get the pink ones out of the oven. Dish when whipping chocolate. Oh! Blue base. Right, I, I didn't... Um, 
I melted the chocolate in the microwave. Uh, melted the chocolate in the microwave and then I just was using a paddle just so to make sure that all the pellets had, were melted and then just to cool it down uh, so it's not too hot I just use a few more pellets if you ever want to learn to do chocolate absolutely superb so it's just part of the bowl isn't oh it? yeah yeah so yeah it's, it's like a non it's a, a non-stick non-stick non non non-slip non at bottom if you ever want to learn to do chocolate absolutely amazingly sign on to one of Ollie's courses all these classes are half price now until um Sunday at midnight, so you can get the uh, the handbag course, the shoe course, there's a bauble course, and there's a truffle ultimate truffle course. Fifteen pounds for each class, and he teaches you how to temper chocolate and do it all correctly. And he's an absolutely amazing master chocolatier. So please take a look at his classes; they're superb. So these ones here now, they are the fine Wayne. Night Wayne. These are the fine cornmeal ones. Uh, and I'm going to bring over the blue jay. Could you pass me a cake stand, please, Simon? What's, what's wrong now? <laughs> Lynn Woodward would like a non slip bottom. <laughs> <laughs> I just like a thin one. <laughs> what would you like? Just a, uh, just a, a nice, uh, I'll have that black um, cake stand. I can put these out of the way because then I can bring the jade ones over, which is the ones made with the semolina. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Finger marks. There we go. Just put those to one side now, just till we've done the. Get rid of that over there. So these balls, the chocolate set's great, so you can just slide it to one side. There we go. And I'll bring over the lovely ones made with semolina now. Them. I'm not going to subject you to uh, watching me uh, put all of them together. So these now are coming off really great. See that they're just they're just peeling, peeling off. Okay, cheers. Yep. Yeah. So I'll carry on using the same nozzle because we've got we've got the uh, the Swiss meringue in there. I used jade, colour splash jade. So my chocolate is still fine. What I'm going to do now is it's it's, it's uh, just set near it's just set near the top, near where the uh, the the cut is there. So what I'm doing is just massaging the chocolate there, just so that it's nice and loose again. Just test a bit out. There we go. It's coming out fine. 
she said. There, I don't like that one. I'll decorate these ones. Now I've got different happy sprinkles here and I've also got edible sprinkles. So these ones are the purple cupcakes and these are called Mermaid Mix. So it's great with the mermaid mix. It's got little stars in and little balls, uh, little rods, all different, all different colours. Pinks, lilacs. There's lime greens in there. Whites. Oh, I'll just put one out of the way oh. uh, because it, the, you know, the chocolate had, had hardened in the end oh, of the nozzle, okay. so it, it didn't look it didn't look pretty. No, so. I won't be eating that one. No, it's blue. <laughs> can't eat blue ones. These are the semolina ones. You can't eat these ones, can you, Simon? No. them up with loads of sprinkles on the website we've got all our sprinkle sprinklicious range as well and you just decorate them up how you want to they look great you can even get once you've done this you can even get your children with the tweezers and get your children decorating them as well i thought i'd pick that up then i can't believe my eyesight right so no, that's fine. That's absolutely fine. So I'm going to put those onto my board as well, and then give them a final little quick sprinkle, and we're done. So we have macarons made with um, fine corn meal, and we have macarons made with semolina, and they have worked out as good as the ones because they're, they're just nut free. They're as tasty and delicious. For anybody who doesn't can't have nuts or doesn't like nuts, it's a perfect, perfect substitute for you. Let's give them a quick sprinkle. Lynn said so you've got too much patience, Karen. She <laughs> just throwing the sprinkles all over the top. So there you go. <laughs> Let's just move that out of the way and move that out of the way and move that out of the way. Just to try and make something look a bit more tidy for you. So there you go. We've got some lovely... Valentine's macarons, but this time they've been done completely nut-free for you. So the pink ones are done with the uh, fine cornmeal and the blue ones are done with the semolina. <laughs> I think, I really do think I need a cup of tea now. That's a good idea. So thank you. So, oh no, I can't go yet. Oh, prize draws, prize draws. I bet you were all sweating cops then, weren't you? Right, so I have a load of prize draws here. So don't forget to like and share this video as well for a chance to go in next week's prize draws. And this 
is for my live done on the 22nd of January. It's for the Brownie Bundle. It was Anne Dickinson. Well done, Anne Dickinson. Um, Anne Cully on the 20... Oh, uh, Anne Cully, who's... Hang on. Oh, it's, you, you've won a bundle of the um everyone's favorite for the uh, bundle of love competition like and share for sharing our video so Anne Cully well done you've won a big everyone's favorite bundle for my live on Monday uh when I did the uh, Valentine's macrons it's a brownie bundle and it was for Diane Doyle well done Diane Doyle and then for Rachel Hannah's at the night time and that's a big bundle of everyone's favorite Katie Dougie Dudigan, well done Katie. And then for Carol last night when she did that brilliant Isomol uh, live, and that, again that's for a big bundle for everyone's favourites, that's Marilyn Anderson. So well done to Anne Dickinson, Anne Cully, Diane Doyle, Katie Dudigan, Dougie, and Marilyn Anderson. If you'd like to email in to the bottom of info.sugarandcrumbs at icloud.com and just say hi my name is Anne I won Karen Griffiths live on the 22nd uh, and then everyone give your name and give you what live you've won and the ladies will um, be able to email email them in with your address as well and if you've got an order going in and we'll get your we'll get your competition with prize draw posted out to you Sorry, I have a question it? from she Jake yeah uh, what do you need to do to take care of your pink board? All you need to do to take care of this pink board is give it a nice wash in warm soapy water. I mean, I just bring a nice warm soapy water cloth over here. I give it a nice wash and then I make sure it's dry. Once a month, treat it with a little bit of Trex. I just get a little bit of Trex on both both fingertips, on the fingers, and I just massage it. I'll just move that there like that. I just massage it into the board all over. So it's a nice uh, a nice coat. So you're not getting it really greasy, you're just giving it a nice treat. And it's absolutely fine, you just leave that on there then. If you've used colour and you've used dust and you've got it all over there and it's stained in and your cloth's not bringing it off, I found last week by rubbing Trex into it and bringing it off with a soft cloth, all the colour came off. So you can get all stains out of the pink board by using a little bit of Trex and using um, a, a nice a nice cloth, a piece of kitchen towel or a nice little damp cloth to bring it off and it'll, it'll do fine for you brilliant, ok so thank you so much to all you competition, competition winners well done, if you'd like to email in and your prizes will be posted out to you the recipe for the macarons is on the website um, I will get the one for the um, for the nut free one on it is the same recipe except where it was 90 grams of ground almonds it's going to be 90 grams of either semolina or of the fine cornmeal but i'll get that recipe put on at the side so you can see the nut free version as well so thank you so much for joining us uh, as i said monday is julie rogerson in all day doing a full day's class and that's on the fairy tree house cake it's going to be absolutely brilliant monday night julie's doing another live as well at eight o'clock and then Tuesday, it's me instead of Carol at two o'clock. Uh, I'm going to be showing you all the new chocolate moulds. I'm going to show. I'm going to get a selection of them out for you of the ones that the three part ones. And we're going to do some chocolate moulding and show you how they work. Wednesday, me and Carol are busy in the kitchen. Thursday, we have Carol and the grandchildren baking at two o'clock in the afternoon. I think they're doing rice crispy and cornflake uh, cake treats. And then we have Laura, lovely Laura's back in the kitchen on Thursday evening. And then Friday, we've got Doe Griffin in doing the Valentine cupcake toppers, a full day's live. As I've said, you've still got time to sign on to all these classes and take a look on the website at the classes that have gone half price. You won't be disappointed for the ladies who haven't done any yet. They're an absolute steal. So thank you so much for joining me today. And thank you, Simon, for your, for your help and for your guidance. You're very welcome. <laughs> a pleasure as always. <laughs> I'll see you ladies. I'll see you on Monday for the ones who are in Julie's class. Bye all. Bye.